Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and we are continuing our series on the IGF On Live Indie Showcase 2012. This time around, we are looking at Torin. Torin comes to us from Sword Tales in Brazil, and it is an honorable mention in the Excellence in Visual Art category. Torin is best described as a puzzle adventure game. It's not quite a point and click, but it has that sort of heavy rain aesthetic, where the game's mechanics are much more geared towards telling you a wonderfully engrossing story, as opposed to having your actions be the defining aspect of the game and the storytelling. Now, don't misinterpret that, you are an active participant in the story, but you're very much handheld and prompted to complete actions which move the story forward, as opposed to a more traditional game where it is in fact your choice of action which moves the story forward. The version of Torrent that's available during the Indie Showcase is an alpha version, and this is a very difficult game to describe because it is an experience. It is something that you move through and you get deeply involved in, and it was really uh, an emotional experience for me. I felt what it must be like for the character. I saw things in the world that were thought-provoking, and it's difficult to really describe my experience without just recounting it bit by bit play by play, but I'll attempt to give you some insight into what I experienced during my 30 minutes with this game and how it made me feel. Torin sets the mood very effectively by starting you out as a baby. You wake up into the world like a newborn, not knowing what's going on or where you are. You quickly realize that you're at the bottom of a very large tower, and there's nothing there but a small bird who attempts to guide you and point you in the right direction. As you fumble through the tower in your sort of baby waddle, uh, you suddenly age, and you're taken aback at first. You don't really understand how much time has passed or exactly what's happened, whether you were unconscious and you aged, or it just happened instantaneously. What you realize quickly is that you are living out this character's entire life in one single day inside this tower. Eventually, your bird companion falls to the wayside because you don't really need an artificial guide any longer. Your own sense of exploration takes over, and you start to guide yourself around the ruined tower. You quickly find a telescope in the ruins, and you use it to peer out, where you see a vision of a knight, but you're not really sure if this is something that you're seeing or something that you're imagining. Is the knight coming to your rescue? Is he a vision of the past or the future? You're not really sure, but before you can really decide, your telescope is shattered as you notice a foul creature lurking just outside the tower. His vision turns your telescope to stone and nearly does the same to you, and suddenly you feel vulnerable. Your character's all alone, and there's this beast outside lurking, just waiting, just menacing, and, and all of a sudden you do get this real genuine sense of, of, of dread, and it carries you throughout the rest of the game as you know that this thing is there. Having escaped the creature's stony gaze, you explore the tower a bit more before finally revealing another vital character in the story, and that is a tree which grows up from the center of the tower. The tree moves and grows, twisting upward and carrying with it a sword. The sword seems to be a promise of salvation, some means to defend yourself against the creature looming outside. The remainder of the alpha demo focuses on your efforts to retrieve the sword. You ascend the tower and the tree under constant threat of the beast, which is just outside the tower walls. This game does a really good job of building real tension and evoking emotion. You feel a real attachment to your character because it starts out in a helpless infant state. Therefore, you're protective of your character. You want to make sure that she continues forward protected from that threat that is constantly bearing down on you. The emotions created by the story are perfectly reinforced by the wonderful graphics. Now this isn't a visually cutting edge game, but everything that's done in this game works so well to reinforce every bit of the storytelling. There's nothing here that is extra or extraneous, it all feels right, it all feels needed. Every bit of bloom, every bit of glow, every particle that floats around in the air, everything. This is definitely an example of a game that has just the right amount of graphics. 
any more rudimentary and I might not feel the emotional connection, any more spectacular and I might get held up looking at the graphics themselves. This is a great, great example of the graphics fitting the game. They didn't specifically go for a retro style just to be cool and indie, and they didn't go for the Unreal 3 engine with all the perks just to be cutting edge. They really, really picked a great graphic style. Everything looks great and works wonderfully, and it all goes towards making this a better game. And so many developers could learn so much from this choice. Ultimately, I have to say, I was charmed by Torrent. I was caught off guard and I was taken on a journey which I didn't expect, and I found myself investing in a character which I didn't even completely understand. And that is a really beautiful and brilliant thing. And in the best of times, that's what games can be. When you see games like Once Upon a Space Time that are trying to forsake the conventions of gaming in order to tell an emotional story, you have to shake your head and think that they're just not quite understanding what games are or what they can do. Because this game is very mechanically a game. At times it's clunky, at times it seems show, it feels like a game. But it also envelops you in this cloak of emotion like few games I've ever seen before. This is a group of individuals who get it. They understand that games can tell emotional stories, but in doing so, you also have to appeal to your audience, the gamer. If you start out by touting how erudite you are for forsaking the traditional concepts of gaming like the game being fun, then you're just stupidly pretentious and you're missing the entire point of what it means to make a game. You're making art for the sake of art, and art for the sake of art is never art. In short, these guys get it. Sword Tales, my hat is off to you. You've made a wonderful experience and I look forward to seeing the entire thing completely finished. Alright guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.